someone liked the video, so it can't just be me. All right. If you are here watching, I don't know who you are, so leave comments. That way I know. And we'll get going on the live lab. So today we are doing the reaction between baking soda and vinegar, which is a classic. I'm sure you've seen it. However, what you probably haven't heard of or haven't seen with baking soda and vinegar is whether it is exothermic or endothermic. So we've been learning about those this week. Exothermic means it releases energy, so it's going to get hot. Endothermic means it has to absorb energy, so it makes everything around it cold. So we're going to do the reaction and see if baking soda and vinegar become hot or cold. Simple as that. So all you need to do this at home is some vinegar. This is 5% vinegar, so it is a little bit of acetic acid and a lot of water. And then we also have baking soda. This is a giant bag from Sam's. You definitely don't need a bag this big because we're just going to use a teaspoon. But this is a very large bag of sodium bicarbonate, which is also known as baking soda. So you need those two things to actually do the reaction. And if you're at home, you can do it in just like a regular drinking glass. A glass is nice because you can feel the temperature change a lot easier than you can for plastic or something. If you want to do a larger version of the reaction where it actually you know, bubbles out and spills over. You might want to get a little plate or something to catch the spillage. And if you want your reaction to happen faster, you need a chopstick to start with or a spoon. But for me, a chopstick works better because it's more like a stirring rod, which is more scientific. So that's what you would be using at home. In the lab, we would probably use a beaker or a flask instead. This is an Erlenmeyer flask and a stirring rod but the ingredients are still the same. So we've got the materials. Um, actually skipped over hypothesis. You should guess whether or not you think it's going to be exothermic or endothermic. Just pick one, because that's what we're testing here today. Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. You just need to know what you're testing for. So we've got all our materials. There's two optional materials on there, and they are a scale and a thermometer. A scale, like what I have here, is really precise. So it's going to get the exact right amount of baking soda and vinegar for your reaction. However, if you don't have a scale, I have provided measurements that you can do with just like a regular teaspoon, this is actually a tablespoon, or a measuring cup like this. So you can use those to measure instead of the scale if you don't have one. The other optional material is a thermometer. We're testing the temperature to see if it gets hotter or colder. So it's easiest to do that with a thermometer. However, if you don't have a thermometer at home, shame on you because COVID-19, you should be checking your temperature. Um, but if you don't have a thermometer, you can just use your finger and determine if it's getting hotter or colder. It's not that scientific, but dealing with what we can while we're in crisis. So that's all the materials. So we're gonna go down and look at the procedure. So the first thing we're gonna do is measure out about four grams of baking soda. Now, this is for the small reaction that will fit entirely inside the cup. If you want to have one that's overflowing, you need to double that amount. So four grams of baking soda or eight grams if you want to do a big reaction. I want to do a big reaction, so I'm going to do eight grams. That's also the same as two teaspoons. So I've got a scale here. If you're using a scale, make sure whenever you put your weigh boat or whatever else you're going to use to measure it on, that you zero it out by like turning it on after you've already put the weigh boat on so that it doesn't count the weight of the weigh boat. So we're gonna measure out eight grams, which is right about two teaspoons. Also, if my one viewer is Ms. Morales, I'm sad. Even though I love you, Ms. Morales, I would have students. Okay, so we've got Eight grams, a little bit over, so I'm going to take just a smidge out. Smidge, smidge. Okay. Eight grams of baking soda. And we're also going to measure out a quarter cup of vinegar or 57 grams. I'm going to do it in not grams because I don't have the appropriate measuring equipment out here on my desk. So I'm just going to do it on or in a measuring cup. 
And since we're going to do the double reaction, we're going to double a quarter, which is a half. So I'm going to measure out a half cup of vinegar. And here, that's a quarter. There we go. Now, before we move on and actually do the reaction, we need to record some observations about the things we have here. There's a nice observations chart on your sheet. You can be filling that in in Google Docs if you would like, or you can be filling it in right here on a piece of paper, pencil. So make observations in the pre-reaction column. So this is before the reaction. We're gonna look at both baking soda and vinegar and record um, what we think about them. So color, look at the baking soda, it's a nice white color, we'll put white. For vinegar, it is clear. Just write down, clear. Now I gotta take the temperature. So I'm gonna get a handy dandy thermometer. Let's see, we'll use this one. Put it in the baking soda. Shouldn't change any temperature because the baking soda is at room temperature. So if we read that, it's right around 22 degrees Celsius. And then wipe that off before you put it in the vinegar. I'm gonna measure the vinegar. Should also be at room temperature. And it is actually, this is a little bit warmer for some reason. Don't know if it's because it was sitting on the ground near the computer. It's 23 degrees Celsius. All right, so those are our two temperatures. And then you gotta smell them. So what we should know in science, probably the safety procedure that most people are uh, most familiar with is wafting. So you can smell the baking soda, it doesn't really have an odor. So we're gonna put no odor on baking soda. And then there's vinegar. You definitely wanna wash this one and not just sniff it. It smells like vinegar, so it's got a strong odor. But we'll write down there, strong odor. Okay, those are all of our observations. If you don't have a thermometer to measure temperature with, you can just say it's hot or cold or room temperature. These are both room temperature because they've been sitting out at room temperature. Okay, so our next task is to do the reaction. I actually skipped a step in our procedure earlier where we put the baking soda into or well, we put the vinegar in the cup, sorry. The vinegar in the cup. And then we're gonna take the baking soda and all at once we're gonna pour it in and watch and see what happens. So you can see it very nicely foams. This actually didn't foam out over the top, but close enough. You can stir it to make the reaction go faster. And because we're stirring the reactions occurring faster, it is gonna have some spillage. You can see a chemical reaction is occurring because there's lots of bubbles. And after it dies down, or you can do this while you're doing the experiment, we're gonna measure the temperature. So if I put the thermometer in here and measure, I see the reading to start going down. It's going, and now it's under 20. It's gonna keep going. And it's leveling out right about 19 degrees Celsius. 19 degrees Celsius. So I need to record that observation. In the post reaction column, we've got color. Look at the color. It's still fizzy, but it's clear in general. Temperature now is at again, 19 degrees still. 19 degrees Celsius. And if you're at home and you don't have a thermometer, just stick your finger in there and feel it goes cold. So you can put cold instead of your temperature. And then the odor is a little bit less vinegary. I mean, there's still a little bit because we don't have the exact right portions. So there's still some vinegar left in there, but it doesn't smell as strong anymore. And it kind of tickles your nose, like, you know, smelling, if you can imagine, like smelling soda. Kind of smells like seven up. So we're gonna put it's got less odor in there, and that's because most of the get the vinegar has reacted away and it's gone. All right, so that is the whole lab on your sheet. Now you just get to answer some questions on the back.
I'm going to let you answer those on your own at home. Um, if you have any questions, you can always email me or Ms. Morales, or you can comment on them. And then I'm actually going to do a little bit more of an experiment. This ends now, the lab does, but we're going to use this reaction to do something kind of cool. I'm going to put these in my sink so they won't be in the way anymore and they won't make a mess. But if you look at the reaction on your sheet, I've got it on the board up here. I know you can't see it terribly well here, but it's on your sheet at the very top at the beginning of the lab where it says chemical equation. I've written it up here. And if you look at that last term, the last compound at the end is CO2. Now, what do you know CO2 as? Carbon dioxide, the thing we breathe out. That's produced in this reaction. It's one of the products. And the little g at the end tells you that that's a gas. So to see if this is actually what's happening, to test whether it's true or not, I'm going to use an Erlenmeyer flask and a balloon, which will be stretched over the Erlenmeyer flask, to capture that CO2. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to triple my recipe here. I'm going to do 12 grams of baking soda, three quarters of a cup of vinegar, and I'm going to put the balloon on top. You can actually, if you're inventive, use this to create bottle rockets um, with parental permission. Of course, do not tell them after the fact that your teacher told you to make a bottle rocket. That's not a good plan. Okay, so triple recipe. We're going to measure out 12 grams of baking soda. I'm going to use my tablespoon here. And a tablespoon is actually closer to the recipe. Three times a teaspoon is a tablespoon. All right, so measuring that out, we got 12. That a little bit. There we go. 12 grams of baking soda, and I will measure out three quarters of a cup of vinegar. Now it's going to be really hard to capture all of the gas produced by the reaction from the flask if I try to put the balloon on after the reaction is already going because it's going to be a big busy mess. So instead of dumping the baking soda in and then putting the balloon on, I'm actually going to put all of the baking soda inside the balloon so that it'll dump out when I put the balloon on. Now, that's a little bit of a difficult task, putting all the baking soda in there. So I have a funnel for that. You can use just a regular kitchen funnel. I'm gonna pour the baking soda in. It'll probably take a little bit of effort and swirling around to get all the baking soda to go through. It's such a small funnel. I'm actually gonna use, well, not my chopstick. I have a real stirring rod. My chopstick's been in vinegar, so if I put it in the baking soda, it's just gonna cause the reaction to occur early. So swirl it around, get all of the baking soda down into the balloon. And we're gonna put it over the top of the flask. It's kind of difficult because this is a large flask. Hoping I'm not gonna rip my balloon. This is the only balloon I could find at the school. And I didn't want to go to Walmart because you know, pandemic. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna grab a smaller flask real quick. which is probably going to cause chaos because it's not big enough to hold all of the reaction. It might make a little bit of a mess. If you want to try this at home, you can use like a Coke bottle or a two liter, whatever, as long as it has a small enough opening to put the balloon over. I'm gonna grab my plate again for spillage. So what we should see after we put the balloon over and dump the baking soda in as the balloon will start to inflate because it's capturing that CO2 gas that is created. And is that what we see? Yes, it is. A pretty big reaction. The balloon is going to capture pretty much all of it. Now, when you get to real chemistry, not just IPC, you learn about gas laws and you could actually calculate from a thing called stoichiometry. You could use this equation to calculate based on how much stuff you put in, how big the balloon is going to be using both stoichiometry and gas laws. If you're one of my chemistry students watching this, well, then you understand how nightmarish that probably would be. It's a lot of math. 
but it's totally possible. So we've captured all the CO2 from this reaction inside of our balloon. There's actually some liquid in the balloon too, and I can feel that it's really cold. And that reaction is still going. Pretty cool. Yep, so if you use enough baking soda, enough vinegar, you can use this for some rocket propulsion. Bottle rockets at home that are safe, don't use anything crazy. So hope you've enjoyed this video and this lab. Um, please let us know if you have any questions or 